Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Today we are in my kitchen and I'm gonna be sharing how I painted my granite countertops white with epoxy spray paint. So I know there's gonna be mixed emotions with this DIY. I have mixed emotions. I love how durable granite is and once you paint them, you kind of take away from that. So there's definitely a lot of downsides to it, but I was just so sick of having orange ugly counters and I was just too excited to try something new. So I'm gonna be sharing the whole process. If I was to do this again, I definitely wouldn't do it the same way. I would use different products so it is way more durable, which I'll share with you guys if you wanna try. Okay, let's jump right in. So here's how the counters looked like before. They were this outdated, saturated, orangey color that I was so over. In this video, I'll first go over the project process. I am definitely gonna go into the nitty gritty of things and share all of the problems I ran into and my troubleshooting with them. I will also at the end be sharing what I would do different and which products I would use that I have tried before that are way more durable than what I did this time. I started by lathering all the countertops with some Dawn dish soap and then rinsing them. I wiped them down and used a razor blade to remove any silicone in the cracks. Honestly, just getting them clean felt like it took the whole day. I also ended up propping up the sink instead of removing it completely. Next, I used some acetone and a microfiber cloth to degrease the surfaces. I borrowed Tony's handy masking station and masked off all the bottom, top, and sides of the counters. I also masked off the kitchen sink to make sure it doesn't get any overspray on it. Okay, next I started giving it my first coat. Here's the paint I used. I've heard a lot about this paint. Uh, I read a ton of reviews and I was super excited to try it. At this point, I had already done so many things wrong. As you can see, I probably should have masked off the whole room from the rest of the house and covered my floors. For some reason, I was fooled into thinking that the overspray wouldn't be so bad. It was way worse than I thought. Um, for my first coat, I just kind of did like a very thin feathered on coat, just so it looks overall white. At this point, I had only bought four cans of this spray paint and my first coat took about three cans. So I freaked out and realized I had to go make a quick run to the store to buy more spray paint. I ended up having to go to multiple locations because Home Depot was out of stock. And by the time I got home, it has been about two hours at this point after applying the first coat. So I quickly started applying the second coat and realized that it was a big fail. The paint started like curdling up in areas and it was lifting the first coat. I scraped off some areas and was thinking to recoat it. And then I decided to take a second and read over the instructions again. And that's when I realized that it actually says that you need to recoat if you are giving multiple coats within 30 minutes or after one week of allowing it to cure. And that's when I sunk in my seat and realized that this project was on hold. So after a week, I decided to do a few things different. I first sanded the areas that had kind of like that scaly, um, curled up texture. I also sanded the whole countertops down just in case so the second coat kind of adheres better. I also noticed that some of the areas on the counter kind of look like scabs of paint were coming off. Even though I had washed and degreased the counters, I guess some dirt still managed to get in there and it was coming off with the paint. So this is one of the biggest reasons why if I were to redo this, I would never use spray paint again. The second thing that I did different was I ended up sealing off the whole room because it had stunk so bad. I taped plastic all over the doorways. I ended up opening the window and sticking a fan in the window so it would suck out all the fumes. And then Tony had this genius idea of opening the window in the back of the house somewhere to create somewhat of a draft. And we kind of left the plastic in the doorway open a little so that draft just keeps sucking through. And this helped so much, we literally couldn't smell anything in the rest of the house at all. I then used some rubbing alcohol before giving it a second coat of paint and a microfiber towel and wiped all the surfaces down again. So at first, when I was giving it the second coat, it seemed like everything was going great. I kind of started by feathering it on lightly 
And then at some point, I noticed that it was doing the same thing. Even after allowing the first coat to cure for a whole week, the paint on the bottom was lifting and it was curdling up in some areas. So I kind of panicked and I decided that I'm not gonna wait a whole other week. This seems to be a reoccurring problem with this paint. So I quickly used a razor blade. I scraped off all the areas that were curdling or bubbling and I kind of feathered on some paint, let it sit for a few minutes and then recoated it completely again. So within like 10 minutes, it was covered up again, which seemed to work great. I'm not sure why the paint kept curdling up. I'm assuming it's a reaction in the paint itself. It seems that this spray paint probably works best only if applied in multiple coats within like five minutes of each other. In the end, I only ended up applying two coats of paint. I did not wanna risk and do a third coat just in case the paint started curdling again. I used the counters for about two days and realized they stain very easy. So I was pretty disappointed and decided to try and use this water-based polyurethane to apply over it. I found this sponge at Home Depot. It says it's for all water-based finishes and it seemed to work great, but the texture it left looked super brushed on. So in the end, I actually ended up using a foam roller, which worked so much better and made the texture look more realistic as far as how countertops should look. And here's how the counters turned out. They look so good white. It brightens up the space so much already. After about the first week of use, I started noticing little areas coming off. Um, it seems some of these areas still must have had some oil or dirt under and they come off pretty easy, but it doesn't keep peeling. As far as caring for the countertops, I try not to scrub very hard. I just use a wet rag to kind of wipe the surfaces down. I try not to leave liquids on them for too long. I have left liquids overnight and they seem to do fine. They have dried and then I would just wipe it, but I do try to avoid that. I'm still waiting to get a new sink and range, but it's already looking so much better in this kitchen. I also love the shine that that clear finish gave the counters. And yes, I do get stains sometimes, but they're very mild and I usually just use the magic eraser and it works great to remove them. So the real question is, would I do this again? Um, no, I wouldn't. Not using these products. Um, this spray paint sucks. First off, I would use a primer and I've used a primer called Bonding Primer or Bonds Primer before. Um, I used this stuff actually to paint my floors years ago and they were wood laminate floors and the floors just held up so well. The primer was so strong. Then I would either use regular latex paint or roll on the epoxy paint. I think rolling it on is the best option because it gives it a nice thick coat. And lastly, I would seal it with Floor Varthane Clear Finish. This stuff is amazingly durable. It lasted for over three years on my floors and my floors still looked great. They just had light scratches, but it never peeled or came up. From all the combinations of painting techniques that I've tried, I would say that this is the most durable one I've tried. I wish I would have done it to start off with. And that's it for this DIY. I have so many plans for this kitchen. I cannot wait to get rid of this shabby chic situation and make it more modern. Hopefully I will have the energy to get all these projects done in the next couple of months. So stay tuned. If you like this video and found it helpful, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos and turn on that notification bell. Okay everyone, I will see you all next time. Bye.